segment called She Who is Powerful. This extremely powerful deity is known as one from whom evil trembles. She's called the Mistress of Dread, the Lady of Slaughter, and She Who Mauls, exiting her fighting prowess. She is associated with war, magic, but also healing and is a direct connection to the Pharaoh. She comes to us from ancient Kemetic Egyptian deity and is an ideal representation of their deities in her anthropomorphic form, that being of the lion or cat-headed deity. And we've done many representations of deities in that form, particularly the strength from this civilization regarding the cat-headed. There would be Mahis and also Bastet who share that same representation with her along with many others. She is specifically classified as a matron deity who was a recipient of worship and into battle she carried many weapons but was most known for her bow and arrow. Her sacred symbol is the Urus, the emblem of the raised cobra in a striking position. Her sacred color is red and her sacred stone is the blood diamond. She is among the most powerful of the deities from the Kemetic pantheon, uh, those of the Enid, and she takes on a role as the Eye of Ra, and although many goddesses would hold that role of a protector and gain through that, through him, the, the power of the solar deity, Sekhmet is in many ways very different in how she uses that power. She also becomes a protector of the Pharaoh through that role of being a protector of Ra. She accompanies the Pharaoh into battle and it is said that she would sp spread fear and alarm amongst his enemies. She was armed with arrows which she shoots through hearts. And her image representation was always that of a lion lioness or a woman with a lion's head. She was also regarded as the mistress of magic and she put her supernatural skills as a healer to assist those who had fought particularly on behalf of the Pharaoh. She is also the counter identity for the goddess Hathor. And many of the stories about Sekhmet start with her as she attacks mankind for offenses against the divinity, particularly against Ra, that humans have, had become divisive against his rule and some sought to remove him. So she goes to mankind to inflict vengeance on them and goes into a bloodlust in which she starts to kill mankind in great numbers, threatening even to destroy mankind itself. Not even Ra could reign in her wrath. And it was not until she was given uh, beer dyed red that got her drunk enough to satiate her bloodlust. She wills her power from Ra in this way. She is a very vengeful manifestation of his power, very different than the other manifestations of the Eye of Ra. It is said that she breathes fire and that the hot wind of the desert is her very breath. She is also linked to the spread of plagues. She is said to be the mother of the lion god Mahis and she is still worshipped and venerated despite her acts of great carnage and slaughter against mankind and during an annual festival held at the beginning of the year people danced and drank great quantities of wine to ritually imitate the extreme drunkenness that stopped her wrath when she nearly destroyed all of humanity her connections to Obviously, other lion-headed goddesses or gods is very intriguing and requires more to understand what these connections mean. The power of the cat in, in ancient Kemetic and Egyptian beliefs is clearly on display. But also her being more of the counter to Hathor, so two different representations of this one goddess and how she reacted in various situations. But as always, we will continue to explore each of these avenues we thank you for stopping in at Nine World Chronicles. Be, please be sure to like and subscribe.